Hello again. In this video I'm going to be looking at probably the simplest and cheapest way to add roof ventilation to a loft or roof space that has breather membrane like this or bitumen type felt like this. This is a lap vent and this particular style is one of my favourites at the moment because they're lightweight and won't damage your felt or membrane as long as you're careful. And if I just turn it over, you can see the vents that sit directly between any overlaps and underlaps in the undersarking in your loft. These bottom vents here will be unseen on install and poke through into the gap between your roof covering and undersarking. Finally, these springy little hooks fasten the vent in place onto the underlapping sarking. Don't worry if it's not perfectly clear, it soon will be. Here is a planned side view of an average tiled roof, although it could be slated, it really makes no difference. The lap vent is inserted between the overlapping undersarking, and as mentioned earlier, it can be membrane or the older black bitumen felt. What this basically does is link the air from inside your roof space to the air underneath your roof tiles or slates. Now, whenever air movement occurs, either by the wind blowing directly up the face of the roof or by wind entering at gutter level near the eaves, it cannot help but enter the bottom of the lap vent and in turn your roof space. And here is the house we will be fitting these vents to today and it was built in the 1970s with no dedicated roof ventilation, just as millions of older properties were. There aren't any real serious problems with condensation or a build-up of heat, but the owner just wanted to make sure it stayed that way, so a little bit of natural ventilation will help. As you can see, the house is quite open to the front and quite exposed to the rear, so rather than fitting 20 of these vents, I shall only be fitting 10, 5 to each elevation. OK, let's get into the loft space, and this is pretty much what you're going to see. The first and most obvious thing to look out for is plunging through the ceiling. This is because joists that you're going to walk on are potentially hidden by insulation like this. If you're lucky, ceiling joists may be visible like the ones here, and you should only place your weight carefully onto these visible timbers, never between them. In the vast majority of cases though, the joists will be totally unseen beneath the insulation layers like this. One technique is to feel the direction and position of the joist gently with one foot whilst holding onto something firm, in my case the roof rafters above my head, and as you can see I've found something here. The other method I'm about to do now anyway is to peel the insulation back with your hands, and it's at this point dust and fibreglass may be kicked up into the air and you'll be glad you're wearing a paper suit and mask. As you can see, I've found the joist and its direction, so the other joist can be found running in the same direction spaced around 400 to 600 millimetres apart. Now that you know where they are, you can either straddle them to navigate the roof space or run planks or walking boards across them, but either way extreme caution should be used. What we're looking for now is an overlap and underlap in the undersarking to fit our first vent to and hopefully there's one at chest height, so let's fit the first one here. The first thing we're going to do now is gently pry apart the overlapping layers. Often these can be stuck together with heat, so be careful. Here I'm using a pointing trowel, but you can just as easily use a blunt knife such as a butter knife, just as long as it's not sharp. As you can see, no real problems at all, and now we know it's free, we can fit the first vent. Now just pop the vent in with the tabs facing up and towards you. I'm doing it one handed here so that I'm not blocking the camera angle, but it really is that easy. Take your time, wiggle it in if you have to, and it's very neat and unobtrusive when fitted. And there you go, the vent leaves a nice neat finish that won't slip, has a low profile, and that helps to avoid stressing the undersarking and possibly risking tears. And unlike some other systems, no cuts have to be made. And if I just pull one outwards gently, daylight can be seen coming through small gaps in the overlapping tiles. And it's these very small gaps that allow wind in when it blows up the face of the roof tiles. And you can actually feel it on your face when this happens. Now I've fitted another four vents to this elevation, keeping them in the lower half of the roof above insulation level for maximum efficiency. 
Next, I've fitted another five vents on the opposite side of the roof in slightly staggered horizontal positions. This helps to ensure air circulation has to occur as no two opposing vents directly face each other and the wind can't simply blow in one and out of the other in a wind tunnel effect. Well, that's this video complete and you can find the lap vents I've used in this video along with an article on roof ventilation and a video of how to fit roof tile vents on the website by clicking the links here or in the description bar. I hope this video has proved useful. Thanks for watching.